Did you know that caffeine is one of the most widely consumed stimulants in the world? 90% of American adults indulge in caffeine-infused beverages almost every day. But here's the kicker. What if I told you that caffeine might actually be making you more tired and fatigued? Sounds crazy, right? Not according to the evidence. I've experienced this firsthand and it led me to put together this eye-opening video. So let's dive right in. Now, most people get their caffeine fix from coffee, but did you know that tea, including black tea and green tea, also packs a punch of caffeine? And let's not forget about the skyrocketing popularity of caffeine-infused energy drinks, especially among youngsters. Oh, and chocolate too. Yep, it contains caffeine as well. It's no wonder that finding someone who doesn't consume any caffeine is like finding a needle in a haystack. People drink caffeine drinks for their pleasure, habit and social interaction. But the main reason might be to combat drowsiness and fatigue, whether it's to wake up in the morning or stay alert during the day. But here's the twist. Based on the evidence I'm about to share, relying on caffeine for an energy boost might not be such a bright idea. Let's start by stating what's already known and accepted in the scientific literature. Caffeine is a performance enhancer. It can enhance concentration and endurance, giving you that extra edge. But some of it may be a placebo where the expectation of a caffeine boost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But make no mistake, caffeine is absorbed quickly into the body and takes effect within minutes. It can stay in your system for hours, with levels reducing by 50% after two to 10 hours. Quite a big range, but people's responses to caffeine does vary widely. Now, here's where things get interesting. Caffeine is notorious for disrupting sleep, and that's the main focus of this video. Even if you think caffeine is not affecting your sleep, it may be silently hindering your body's ability to produce melatonin, the sleep-promoting hormone. It may also affect your sleep cycle and your deep sleep. So let me ask you this. Do you think people are consuming more caffeine now compared to a decade ago? And could this be the reason why the number of Americans sleeping less than six hours per night has skyrocketed in the last 20 years? Leave a comment below and share your opinion and thoughts. Here's the key takeaway from the video. Caffeine's reputation as a stimulant might seem like a lifesaver when you're tired and fatigued, but it might also be the culprit behind your exhaustion. They call it the coffee cycle, where morning drowsiness leads to increased caffeine intake during the day, later disrupting your sleep and causing even more morning drowsiness. It's a vicious cycle that can eventually lead to extreme fatigue or burnout. And let's not forget the potential toll on your immune system that sleep deprivation and fatigue can have. Addiction also comes into play. Overnight is enough time to experience caffeine withdrawal symptoms, which can be relieved in the morning with a simple cup of coffee. Consumers may not even realize that they're going through caffeine deprivation every night, but that morning need a coffee bad mood is a sure sign that they are. Other signs of the withdrawal include headaches, increased anxiety, and reduced fine motor tasks. Let's get back to caffeine and fatigue. Here is an interesting study where they asked 323 medical professionals about their sleep habits and caffeine use. Those that consumed more caffeine reported having greater trouble staying awake. Again, the same question arises. Is the tiredness the cause of the increased caffeine ingestion or the result of it? So why not just quit caffeine and sleep more? Well, this will be a logical thing to do, but it is simply much more convenient to sleep less and grab a coffee. The problem occurs when you do this consistently. You may end up with more fatigue and diminished performance. The message in this video is of particular importance to those suffering from or susceptible to fatigue syndromes. Because while the caffeine may give you a boost, it is also likely to have been involved in the cause of the fatigue syndrome, or at least something which may have a negative impact. So individuals with fatigue syndromes need to be particularly careful with caffeine that they don't end up creating a deeper energy debt off the back of the short-term use of caffeine. Sensible alternatives to caffeine may be switching to decaffeinated drinks, even if that's only after midday. Sleeping more, obviously. Setting an alarm to go to bed at the same time can help to ensure adequate sleep and using other natural stimulants like exercise or a simple splash of cold water. 
Please share this video with anybody who you think may find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hopefully if you've got this far, you've left a comment and let us know your opinions. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.